And that's what I want to be remembered for is turning around and helping others and holding out my hand and saying, I've been through this and I can help you through this as well. Welcome to the Well with Cannabis podcast, a show dedicated to telling the life-changing stories of those who live well with cannabis, all while teaching you how to do the same. Meet your host, Emily Kyle, a registered dietitian nutritionist turned certified holistic cannabis practitioner. Emily changed her life for the better with the help of the cannabis plant, and now she is committed to helping others do the same. Tune in each week to hear heartwarming stories and gain the knowledge you need to feel connected, inspired, and supported on your own cannabis journey. Whether you're a new cannabis consumer or a lifetime lover, you'll benefit from these uplifting tales of real-life journeys that will show you how you, too, can live your best life well with cannabis. Before we jump into today's episode, I wanted to share a note on potentially sensitive content. The episodes on the Well With Cannabis podcast are created for adult audiences only. We will at time cover sensitive topics, including, but not limited to, suicide, abuse, mental illness, sex, drugs, alcohol, psychedelics, and the obvious use of plant medicine. Explicit language may be used occasionally. Please refrain from watching or listening to the show if you're likely to be offended or adversely impacted by any of these topics. The information on this show is for informational and educational purposes only. It does not constitute medical advice. If any of the content on this podcast has brought up anything for you, please reach out or speak to a professional or someone you trust. Hello and welcome to the Well with Cannabis podcast. My name is Emily Kyle, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and certified holistic cannabis practitioner, and I am your host for this show. So today in our very first episode, I am going to be giving you just a little overview of what I hope this podcast is going to become and what I hope you take away from it when you listen to our episodes. And then I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on me, my journey with cannabis. I'm going to ask myself the same questions that I plan to ask all of our upcoming guests. And I just want to give you the chance to feel like you know me, because if we are going to be spending any amount of time together on a podcast, whether you are listening to me in your car, in the shower, in your home, we are spending time together and I appreciate it. And I want you to feel connected and like, you know, who is behind the voice on the other line. So welcome. I am super excited to be starting this project. So if you don't know me, my name is Emily Kyle, and I work exclusively as a cannabis educator, primarily through my website, emilykylenutrition.com. And it's amazing that I get to work in cannabis and that this is my full-time job now. I never expected I would be working and running a business in the cannabis space the way I have, and it's really magical. I'll take you through my journey there. But cannabis has given me so much besides just a career. I mean, it has improved my life in so many different ways. And so I feel like my purpose in this world is to spread that message to other people that cannabis is life-changing and that it can make a huge impact on your overall health, wellness, and quality of life. And that's what I hope to share here in this podcast. So the goal is to interview all sorts of people from all walks of life. I've already recorded about 10 interviews and so far it's going exactly the way I wanted it to go. Real people talking about real life situations, what brought them to cannabis and how they're just living a life truly well with cannabis at this point. And so I'm so excited for anyone who is listening. My goal is that you're going to take away three things from this podcast. The first is connection. When I first started using cannabis, I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. I didn't learn about it from a girlfriend or a mom or a relative. And I always felt so alone in my journey. And I don't want anyone to feel that way anymore. You know, we are lifting the the stigma and the stereotypes, and it's becoming more accepted, especially here in the United States where I live, and legalization is happening everywhere. And as we see legalization, we still feel very alone and isolated in a lot of situations. And so my hope is that if you are listening to this and you are currently using cannabis and it feels amazing and it feels right, but you are still feeling lonely or just that you don't have a personal connection to someone who really, truly believes in the magic of the planet. I hope that this podcast is going to bring you that. These interviews that I've done so far are 
heartwarming, inspiring, and that is just what I want you to feel when you're listening on the other end. So that brings us to number two, which is inspiration. And when we talk to all of our guests, they are regular people. I am a regular person. I am a random girl who grew up in a small town in upstate New York. I have nothing really special about me at all, but cannabis has changed my life in so many different ways. And now I am literally talking to thousands and hundreds of thousands of people every month about cannabis. And so inspiration in the sense that if somebody else can come from their hardest times, and I'll talk about mine and other people will talk about theirs in their interviews at the times that life really seemed the hardest, whether, you know, whatever it is, and that somehow cannabis was introduced to them from a friend or an act of bravery or something. And cannabis has really changed the course of their life. But they're a regular, normal person. They're now living their best life. And so I want you to feel inspired when you listen to these interviews and think, wow, like, if you don't currently use cannabis, maybe incorporating that into your lifestyle could get you to the next level of where you're feeling better. And if you do currently use cannabis and you're feeling ashamed or alone, I want you to listen to these interviews and be like, you know what, I am not alone in this journey, whether or not I am physically close to these people or not, listening to them through my earbuds, hearing this conversation, being a fly on the wall, this is giving me the inspiration I need to go out and live my best life with cannabis. And last but not least, my third pillar is going to be education. So I am not going to claim to know everything about cannabis because the more I learn about cannabis, the more I realize I don't know, we don't know, science doesn't know. I will never sit here and preach and say, I know everything there is to know. But I do know some stuff and I do know that basic education can really help everybody when it comes to cannabis, whether you use cannabis or not. So I do hope to add in a little bit of education as we go and make things, you know, as evidence-based and educational as possible. It, it's really tricky in the cannabis space, but I do have, a, I'm, a, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist by trading. And so I do have a little bit of that medical field in me. Of course, I want to make sure that we are giving the best and most solid advice out there. And so hopefully if we can provide just a little baseline education that will leave you feeling better off in the end as well. And I will caveat to say like, I'm not perfect. I'm not out here to claim to be perfect. I am literally just a woman who fell in love with the cannabis plant and it has changed my life dramatically. I'm not an expert. I'm not, not anything special, but I'm genuine. I really feel like it's my job to turn around and say, you know, what? I've been helped my turn to turn around and say, here's my hand, take it. I'm going to help you next. I don't mind saying, I'm sorry if I'm wrong in cancel culture. I'm so sure I'll offend someone at some point, I like to swear, but I'm just here to be a real person. And I hope that we can connect and you can feel that with me. I will also say, as I go through this podcast, I always want people to know I am not against pharmaceuticals or Western medicine in any way. Can they have bad outcomes? Yes what if my son breaks his arm and needs to go to the hospital, thank God for Western medicine. And if you take a pharmaceutical to manage your anxiety and depression, and that makes you feel good, more power to you. I don't want anyone to ever feel like if they are doing something that is currently working for them, that they should change that. So as we go through these conversations, you know, a lot of people talk about their ability to get off pharmaceuticals and to leave that behind. I just don't want you to feel bad if you're not there yet, because you don't have to be. All right, that's it. That's what the podcast is. I'm going to read the tagline here, and then I'm going to move on to my own personal story. So this podcast will feature inspiring interviews that share heartwarming stories of how cannabis has improved the lives of real people just like you worldwide. Listeners will walk away feeling uplifted, knowledgeable, and empowered to make their own choices about cannabis consumption. And the three things you'll get from listening to this podcast, I hope, are connection, inspiration, and education. Now, if you're here just to learn more about the podcast, that part is over. I'm going to move into my own personal story. And if you want to stick around and listen to it, please do. I hope it will be very similar to the interviews that you're going to be hearing in our next series of episodes. I am going to share my journey with cannabis, how it started, and how it's going now. And really, truly, I just want the opportunity to connect with you as my listener. I want you to feel like you know who I am. 
the person behind, I mean, I spend so much time just on the internet as a web page. Like I want people to get to know the real me and really understand why cannabis has impacted my life in such a really profound way. And then why I can connect with a lot of my interviewees because I feel like at the end of the day, all cannabis users have a lot of things in common, especially shared life experiences. So hopefully we can all just connect there. My story really starts in 2018 when I graduated high school. I live in the middle of nowhere, upstate New York, just outside of Rochester. I graduated with maybe like 150 kids in my class. I was always the mean girl in high school. I always look back and feel bad about who I was, but now it makes more sense as I move forward into my story of how this all happened. So high school was high school. I guess I hated it. I was a mean girl. I'm sorry if I was mean to anybody in high school. Now I think about it and I feel bad. So anyway, I graduated at 17. My birthday's in October. And I went to Fredonia's. I stayed in the dorms. And I wasn't ready. Emotionally, mentally, I really, really started to struggle bad with anxiety and depression. And, you know, doing all the college things that you're not supposed to do. And I dropped out with like a 1.9 GPA and came back to my mom and dad's house. And that was probably my lowest moment. I, I felt so physically, mentally, emotionally terrible about myself in all ways. And now that I look back at it, I just realized that it was anxiety and depression that I wasn't able to control on my own. And, you know, obviously like just big life changes. So I moved back home and I met a boyfriend of, or maybe I had the boyfriend at the time. I don't know. But anyway. I had a boyfriend and his family was extremely cannabis positive and I had never really been introduced to cannabis. I'll actually share an interview I did with my mom and she, I never knew that she used cannabis throughout my whole childhood. And I don't really remember smoking weed in high school, maybe a couple times here and there. But when I was introduced to this boyfriend, like their family was cannabis consumers and very open and friendly about it. It was so different for me. And eventually I tried it and it was like, oh my gosh, the world has just opened up. And within a few weeks, never mind you, I'm a, a college dropout and I'm waitressing. And that was it. I really felt bad about myself. And cannabis comes in and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, like, I feel amazing. Like, this is what I have been missing these last three, four years of my life. Like, this is what it's like to not be riddled with anxiety and depression. And this is what it looks like to, like, feel like I can be productive again. And it changed everything for me. So I went back to my local community college, MCC. I cannot tell you what a great experience I had. So I enrolled and I was so proud of myself. And I was like, I'm going to school to become a registered dietitian. And at the time, as you know, most 18 year olds are, I was just obsessed with my own self and how I looked. And well, I should say I was somewhat inspired to become in the health field. My sister, she is a type one diabetic. She was diagnosed when we were seven. So growing up like food and health and wellness was always like a component of our lives. So I, I did have a separate interest there, but also I was like secretly just, you know, in for myself. And I was like, I'm going to school for nutrition because I can learn all these things and benefit myself. So anyway, I went to MCC, I commuted. So I still lived with my mom and dad and, and with my boyfriend at the time. And I was using cannabis daily. And I tell you, I felt great. Like to the point where I was also waitressing, but I believe I picked up like two jobs. I was working all the time. I was paying my tuition. So I paid my whole way through MCC. And I was just like on top of the world. I was working, I had a boyfriend. I, you know, cannabis changed everything. And so I ended up not staying with that boyfriend. And I just can't thank him and his family enough, especially his family I actually ran into his father recently, maybe like a year ago. And he was so sweet and nice and told me how proud of me he was. And he knows my story. And it really felt full circle to me because if it wasn't for that family, I mean, they, they changed my life in so many different ways. So again, I know you guys know who you are. Thank you so much. So moving on, was at MCC, waitressing, feeling amazing. 
time to move to big girls school. And so at this time I was still living with my parents. I had a new boyfriend and a new job at a local restaurant very close to where I lived. And this job actually has changed the course of my life as well. So I got this job at Ember Woodfire Grill and I, I've met my very best, some of my, a lot of my very best friends in the world. I met my husband there. I, that place has given me so much. And so I waitress there and I ended up getting accepted to RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, to pursue my bachelor's degree in nutrition and dietetics. So I spent two years smoking weed, going to college, working three restaurant jobs, and during this time, I hid the fact that I used cannabis like hard from everyone, especially going to school at RIT. I remember driving my cute, I had the cutest little red Hyundai Tiburon two door sports car, but I was commuting. I didn't live on campus. So it was nice to have a car that I, I worked for, paid for, bought myself. And I remember I would smoke in the car. So naughty. I know this is so naughty, but like before class. And then I had like a bag of perfumes, lotions, potions, you name it. I'm talking gum, lip gloss, hand wash, everything to the point where I was like OCD about it before I went into class because God forbid anyone would know that I use cannabis. Like I always was like, if anybody ever found out, I would be dead. Like I can't even face the thought that people would know. So I made my way through college. I ended up graduating and I was really, really proud of myself because I worked my whole way through college. I paid my way through college. I took on my own student loans when I couldn't pay for it. But, you know, my parents gave me all the emotional support that I needed, but I really did that on my own. And me and cannabis did that together. And I was really, really, really excited to graduate. So I graduated in 2013. Gosh, that sounds like so long ago. And in 2004, well, immediately after that, I went to, I had to go to graduate school. And if, if you want to become a registered dietitian, you have to do a 1200 hour unpaid internship for a year. And so I did that along with my master's degree at the same time. So I could just get it done and work. And my ultimate goal was to work in a hospital as a registered dietitian. I thought that that was the gold standard in my life. I was going to make $50,000 a year. I was going to wear a cute outfit and everything was going to be perfect. And I was working towards that goal. And so in 2014, I graduated with my master's degree. I did not take my exam yet, but while I graduated with my master's degree, I also was pregnant with my son, Ransom. And it was a wonderful welcome surprise with my current, my husband, Phil. We weren't married at the time. And so, I mean, life was pretty good. I absolutely abstained from cannabis, though, when I found out I was pregnant because I was terrified, I guess, you know, as every mother is. And I didn't experience a lot of morning sickness at all. I was really quite healthy. So I uh, just continued to waitress at that time in my husband's restaurant. I didn't end up going to get a job as a dietitian yet because I was pregnant and I had I was knew I didn't want to be working with the new baby. So waitressing, waitressing, waitressing. Ran was born in September. And then I just fell in love with being a mom. He was in is still the perfect child, perfect first child and perfect like just companion for my life. Ransom is a family name. Everyone's always like, why did you name your kid Ransom? And that is his great grandfather's name and also his great great grandfather's name. So just a little tidbit there. So me and Phil, my husband Phil was a partner at the restaurant that I worked in. We fell in love at work. He was a chef. I was a waitress. I cannot believe we worked together in that environment for five years and still ended up getting married, which is crazy. So Ran was born in 2014. I, in 2015, like, you know, a few months after he was born, I really came to this realization, like, oh my God, like, I cannot go work a full-time job. Like, who is going to, A, watch this baby, but B, like, I want to be with this baby. Like, I cannot envision, like, a full-time job at this point. So, I got this crazy idea that I was going to start a blog. And I remember he was an itty bitty infant and I pulled up my big PC computer and I started 
maybe it was like Wix website or GoDaddy website. And it was called RDN Mommy because I was a dietitian and I was a mom. And I started my job, my blog. And once my, you know, couple months with the baby was up, I actually got my quote unquote dream job at the hospital, at Highland Hospital. And I thought it was my dream job. I was so happy. It was a part-time job so I could be home with my son. My mom watched him while I went to work. I worked Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I thought that that was it. That's what I went to school for. That's, that was perfect. I worked there all of 2015. I worked there all of 2016. In 2016, me and Phil got married. So we had randomly got married, but either way, it still works out perfect. But in 2016, as I was working in the hospital, it really, really, really sunk in that, holy crap, like, this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life, like, working in a hospital. First off, like, I just don't have the stomach for it. Like, it was gross. The, and I'm so sorry. Like, I know this is not anybody's fault, but, like, hospitals are just, I'm just not that kind of person. My sister is a registered nurse. She is that kind of person. She is a wonderful, blessed, amazing nurse i just can't do it so there was that and then there was just a lot of like realizing that this healthcare system is whack like i remember having to take in a, a breakfast tray with two slices of french toast and orange juice and apple syrup and you literally set the tray down and you're like hi you're here because you've been diagnosed with diabetes let's talk about your diet and just that oxymoron in and of itself was like, what am I doing? Or I worked in oncology, women's oncology. And there was a point where like a woman would come in on diagnosis of being diagnosed with breast cancer. And they wanted us to go give like them a pamphlet about weight loss. Imagine being diagnosed with breast cancer. And here comes Emily in her high heels with a pamphlet. And she's like, you want to learn and talk about losing weight? Like, if that was me, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. What? Like, it, it's so backwards. It's so inhumane. And so, unfortunately, I actually got to experience this for real life. So, 2017, I had an IUD placed because I, I didn't want to have any more babies at the time. And, I, you know, just like all women do, I thought it was just regular procedure, no big deal. But as you listen back on the commercials and they're like, 1% of people might have X, Y, and Z. I ended up being that 1%. So I got really sick. My stomach expanded. Like it just swelled up and it was so painful. I was in and out of the hospital a few times. If, this is what makes me the most mad. If they would have just taken out the IUD when I first said that this was a problem, none of the other things would have happened. But they didn't listen to me. They left the IUD in, and I ended up developing pelvic inflammatory disease. And because of that, my stomach was so bloated. And this was like a two-month ordeal. In and out of the hospital, gynecologist appointments, ultrasound. I ended up with a cyst, a grapefruit-sized cyst. And then they, eventually, I had so much scarring and scar tissue that I lost all function of my left ovary and fallopian tube. And then I think the worst part about this is after like being in a hospital, having all these things, and they just kept throwing these medicines and antibiotics at me, I ended up developing C. diff. And if anyone's ever had it, it's like the worst like diarrhea of your life. And they misdiagnosed that as well. And I had to live with that for two weeks before anyone realized what it was. And so throughout this like two month ordeal, by the end of that, I was like, fuck this. I am not doing this mainstream medical bullshit anymore and i did have an OBGYN who was she wasn't even dabbling in her holistic side because she said to me she was like you're gonna stop all of these things all of these medications all of these antibiotics and she gave me this like gut health protocol like these four r's and told me to take like 30 supplements and like the dietitian in me was like i'm willing to give this a try and i gave it a try i went cold turkey on the medications 100% on the all natural remedies. And that was what helped me get better in cannabis too. And so after all this is said and done, 
you know, I missed a lot of time at work too. And I felt like my work was not sympathetic to what I went through at all. Like being hospitalized, they were just not understanding. And I felt like betrayed, honestly. I felt betrayed by everyone who worked at that hospital who treated me terrible. I felt betrayed by all of the healthcare providers who also like, not necessarily healthcare providers that treated me, but that I worked with that treated me terrible. Like I saw firsthand how disgusting our mainstream medical system is. Like I remember one day I showed up at the emergency department and throwing up so bad, my stomach, my everything's like swollen up. I'm laying on the emergency room floor and a nurse stepped over me, like never looked at me, never talked to me, anything. They thought, you know, at one point accused me of doing drugs. It just, I feel so much empathy and compassion for people who have had the same experience because as I do these interviews, you'll find out there are so many people who have had the exact same experience. And that to me is wild. I guess it's not surprising. Like part of me is like, oh my gosh, like thank God for Western medicine and mainstream medicine. It saves lives every day. And the other part of me is like, what the, what are we doing here? Like we cannot keep doing this as a society. So all this happened to me. And like a couple of months later, I quit the hospital. I was like, I cannot continue to work in a system that is so broken and so disgusting. And that was a really hard decision for me. So all this time I was like growing my food blog on the side. I'm like high nutrition. And I was literally just a food blogger, like taking pictures of food, writing recipes and posting it on my blog. I wanted to quit my hospital job so bad. And I was so nervous because I didn't have any money to speak of to support myself. I had my baby son, Ransom. I had my husband, Phil, but he was working full time in the restaurant. He wasn't making a ton of money. It would have been a real pinch if he was the sole income. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go all in on this food blog and I'm going to see, because I had made a little bit of money from it. And I was like, I'm going to see what I can really do here because I can't do this anymore. And I'll never forget the day my dad was the most supportive. And he was like, if you're not happy, you have to quit. There's always something else on the other side and you're young and you have lots of opportunity. And so I always thank him, dad, for giving me that opportunity to let go and, and, and say I'm leaving the hospital. So left the hospital and God, it was the best thing I ever did. Probably the scariest decision I ever made. But in the back of my mind, I was like, I'll just go back to waitressing because I would rather waitress than work here. And so I went in all in on my food blog in that year. 2018 was like amazing. It was my year of yes. I said to myself, if I'm going to do this business thing, I'm going to say yes to every opportunity that comes my way. And holy cats, it led me on this like crazy journey. So I was working as a registered dietitian and I was doing all sorts of really fun stuff. I had my blog and I had this really cool gig where I was on TV, my local uh, news station, Good Day Rochester. And every Monday morning, I had my own five minute segment where I could talk about anything food and health related, which was, is tr truly still like today, like the highlight of my career. I, I've done over 300 live TV shows, interviews, and it was so fun. I loved it, everything about it. And during this time, I was still in the cannabis closet. I definitely would never have wanted anybody to know that I use cannabis. I remember starting when I did the new segments, I did them for five years. And when I very first started, I was like, I will never smoke before I do a new segment. And then like a year in, I was like, maybe just I'll just I'll do a puff. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm doing, I can do the news better when I'm feeling better. And so I use cannabis before I go on live TV and I still do, did an amazing job. I love, I still do actually do these segments now across the country. And then I also had the opportunity to publish some cookbooks. So as a registered dietitian, I was approached with a couple thyroid cookbooks you've seen in the background here. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, you wrote those. I've, I'm a published author five times, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. I've walked into Barnes and Noble and picked up my cookbook. And all the while I am someone who uses cannabis every single day. And I just, cannabis for me has given me like 
so much productivity, energy. Like it doesn't even have to be sativa. People are like, oh, it's sativa. It's just for me, that's how my body, it can help me relax too, but I just feel so good and energized. And that's actually how I feel about this podcast project right now. Like I'm so excited to work on it. So 2018, my business is a dietitian, amazing. And I got to travel like all over the country doing all these really amazing things. So I had to go to Philadelphia and tour a mushroom farm. I got to go to California and tour a peach farm. I went to New Orleans to learn about lamb. I went, actually, I also went to Utah to learn about lamb. Like I did some of the coolest things as a dietitian and I loved every second of it. But I could never tell any of the dietitians that I used cannabis. I remember going to the conferences, hiding all my things. And so I just was really like, I thought that as a professional, there was no way to merge cannabis and my job. And so interesting enough, 2019 comes around and CBD comes on the scene. And, and I honestly didn't even really know about CBD. And I started doing some research. I was like, oh, like, okay. If I start talking about this, like maybe this is like the perfect toe in the water to start talking about cannabis because everyone seems to be okay with this. So 2019, I started talking about CBD and people were so interested. And I was like, oh my gosh, I started on my blog writing about it. And that's when I met our then, our now uh, business partners, if you will, Doug and Romy from Viva Oils who make our products. And so 2019, my nutrition business was doing so good. I start slipping in CBD. It's going really well. And this is something I'm super proud of, but my husband was able to retire from his job at the restaurant. And so I didn't really even have that much money. I was like, I have plenty of money. You're fine. Like, please, because like, I just wanted him to leave the restaurant. It really wasn't good for a work-life balance. Like he was going into work at 11 a.m., coming home like midnight, 1 a.m., we had a baby, like it, it was what, two or three. He never got to see him. You know, I, once I quit my job at the hospital and started working as an entrepreneur, I unlocked the realization that freedom was in my hands, time freedom, like freedom of, like that is my number one core value. And so I, when he was ready to leave the hospital, to leave the restaurant emotionally, I was like, I am here we can do this let's do it and he did he left the restaurant probably one of the greatest greatest moves we've ever made together and so i was like come on like i'll i'll figure out a way to make this work and then it just you know everything happens for a reason he comes in we start talking about the cbd we met doug and romy and we all went out to colorado my husband i am ransom we met doug and romy and we talked about creating cannabis products and at the time it was cbd products and they took us to the lab in the kitchen and they showed us how they make everything and how we could get products made and so my husband really took on the role of our shop and so we started adding products to our website COVID hits he had just quit his job i was like oh my god so COVID hits our business at the time, our sole income was ad revenue from the website. So when you visit our website, we get like quarter million views a month, visitors a month. And you see the ads and that's how we make money. And so COVID hits and it helps us so much because people are home making things and they're bored. And so we published our very first like cannabis recipe. It was cannabis brownies. Which it's crazy that I rank for cannabis brownies on Google, but we were strategic about it. And then we published cannabis butter. And if you Google these things, like my name comes up and we were like, oh my gosh, like this is so cool. So we went all in on the website, produced tons of cannabis content. And at this point I was like, you know what? I'm going all in on cannabis. First of all, being a dietitian, part, like parts of it suck. I hate it. Second of all, like I can't go anywhere. No one can see me. Who's going to judge me if I'm talking like in my own business about cannabis? It's not like a dietitian's going to be like, mm, you lost your license. And I, I guess like part of COVID like made me really like, I actually don't care like about anything that anybody thinks. And so we started publishing all this cannabis content and it just blew up. And that was really the goal of, or the, what I needed to be like the sign from God that 
going into all in on cannabis was the right thing to do. And so I changed a lot of parts of my business. A lot of it stayed the same, but now we only do cannabis education. So we produce blog content, you know, social media, but really pr producing free content that people can Google and get answers to their questions and learn how to use cannabis. And I then in return, get the ad revenue so that I can stay home with my kids and have that freedom that I really, really desire. So that went great during COVID. And then in 2021, even though I was told that I would never get pregnant again because I had lost an ovary in a fallopian tube, I found out I was pregnant with my sweet angel, Roman. And he was, I mean, truly a miracle, surprise, shock. I got, I mean, I was so lucky to have him. And so at the time, it was actually like so hard for me because I never thought I could get pregnant again. And so I never had to think about like wh what choice I would make if I needed to use cannabis during my pregnancy. And when I found out I was pregnant, I was like, I can, you know, probably do this without cannabis. But I actually had the worst morning sickness ever. Like I spent the first 18 weeks of his pregnancy in bed. Like I could not function. And the only thing that helped me is cannabis. And I really don't give a shit what anybody thinks because I don't know if I could have carried that pregnancy healthy and as well as I did without cannabis. I have no regrets. My midwife was actually extremely supportive. I had a medical marijuana card at the time and they didn't care. They were like, if that's what makes you feel better, then go ahead. And so I'm so glad I did. He is absolutely perfect. But at the time, I was so afraid of public opinion. And I couldn't believe that I'm like, here I am, cannabis educator, Emily Kyle, pregnant. And I did not want to discuss my choice to use cannabis while I was pregnant. I didn't want people to judge my family. I didn't want people to judge me. And I didn't want people to judge my baby. And at the time, I was pretty active on social media. I had a big Instagram following. And so I stepped back from all forms of social media for a full year. And at first it was like really hard, but then I was like, oh my gosh, like life exists on the other side of social media. That was a different uh, lesson. But I left social media for a year. I'm so glad I did it. It really brought me back to my family, back to my roots, back to who I am, what I choose to do. I use cannabis all throughout my pregnancy. I'm glad I did. And so Roni was born in 2021, quiet year. We just, you know, kept chugging along with the business. And in 2022, I made a really big life decision for us all. And we bought a house, a second home in Florida. And part of that is because I suffer so bad from seasonal affective disorder. And so I use cannabis to manage my anxiety and depression in, in the first place, but I live in upstate New York and we don't see the sun all of winter. And it really has been very hard on me for the last several years. So now I'm a snowboard, snowbird. This will be my third year. I'm spending the winter in Florida and I am pumped about it because I really am putting my health and wellness first. Cannabis helps me do that. I really think I'm the healthiest I've ever been. Cannabis helps me eat healthier. It helps me exercise. It helps me take care of my mental health, physical health. And, you know, making, I make life decisions now based on the health of myself and the health of my family. And cannabis really gives me the confidence to be able to do that. And so I'm really, really, really proud of that. And so that year I had made a little return back to social media and that's what's got us here. So I was posting on Instagram. I loved my Instagram account. I had it for like six years and like high on nutrition. And one day I had a video that went viral and I was like, oh my God, my first viral video. And it was a video of me and my son Ransom chopping down a cannabis plant. It got to three and a half million views and it was crazy i mean i saw so much growth in my account like the whole thing was like a whirlwind so exciting now there was a super bad side to it too like people were so mean oh my god well anyway i'm pretty sure people started reporting the post because oh my god god forbid kids are around canvas plants which i will talk about on another podcast episode there's literally nothing 
harmful about children being around cannabis plants. But I believe a lot of people reported my account. And so Instagram deleted it, deactivated it, suspended it. I applied for the appeal and I said, you know, oh, I should say in 2022, I became a licensed in New York State adult use cannabis cultivator. So I'm a quote unquote cannabis farmer. I'm allowed to grow up to one acre of adult use THC cannabis. I grew 10 plants last year. But anyway, so I responded, I'm like, I'm a, a licensed cultivator here in New York State. Here's my license number. And they gave me my account back. Three weeks later, I get a message. Account is gone. We've deleted it. You violated our policy on guns and drugs. No appeal. It's gone. Oh, my God. It took me, like, I was so upset about it. Like, so upset. Because... I'm not doing anything wrong. There's literally nothing illegal about what I'm doing. There's nothing morally wrong with what I'm doing. And like, why are we facing this type of censorship over a plant? Like there has to be something bigger. So I went through like a three week, like emotional, I don't know, like, not that I should be defined by my Instagram account or how many followers I have, but it definitely was a vanity thing for me. I had to get over and so finally, like clarity just came to me and said, you know, the the universe is making a decision here for you. You need to decide what you're going to do moving forward, but this is not the path. And so it just, it came to me and I guess maybe it had always been back in my mind that I needed to do something that I owned that could be bigger than social media. And that's where the idea for this podcast came in because A, not only do I love being on camera, obviously I spent a lot of time on TV. I, I'm going to obviously do videos here along with the podcast. I love talking. I feel like I have a really unique personality. I have a very strong, very confident personality. So I really enjoy getting the chance to talk and share that with people. And a podcast can't be taken away from me. Instagram can't delete it. Facebook can't delete it. YouTube can delete me. Facebook can delete me. Instagram can delete me. I'm not going to spend any more time on any platform that can be deleted. And these upcoming interviews are so amazing. I guarantee you they'll be deleted when I post them on YouTube, but they can't ever be deleted from my website. So that is why I'm here podcasting loud and proud. If you want to take me off Apple Music, I don't care. It will always live on my website. And that is the one thing I own. And I'm super proud of that. So that was my full story on cannabis. I mean, cannabis is life for me. Like, I'm not obsessed with it, but I can't live without it. And when I think about the benefits that come from it versus the drawbacks, like it's a no brainer. And I just want to show people that like, I am a regular person. I'm a productive person. I'm a responsible person. I'm an ambitious person, my kind person, thoughtful, you know, all the stereotypes that are associated with cannabis. My, I, my goal is to use this podcast to bring because everyone who I've interviewed is smart, articulate, educated, kind, wonderful. Like I just want to show the very best of cannabis users. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to get to do that. So let's wrap this up. I am going to be asking the same four questions to all of my podcast guests. So I am going to ask myself that as well. Okay, first up, what are you most proud of? And I thought about this question, and I guess it is the lifestyle that I've created for myself. I have created a business that suits my lifestyle versus the other way around. I've created a business that allows me to work two hours a day and spend the rest of the time with my kids. And I'm most proud of being a stay-at-home work at home mom if that makes sense um, my mom was a stay-at-home mom i went i didn't grow up in daycare I, I don't want to talk shit about daycare i know a lot of people have to take their kids to daycare but for me being able to be with my children as much as possible it makes me so proud just because i love them so much i enjoy the time that we spend together so much and when i'm not with them when i'm here working my husband's with them he's home too i have given my children two parents home 24 seven. And that to me is just the greatest gift that I could have. I know that this time with them, they're eight and one years old right now is so short. And I just, if I had to go back and waitress in 10 years, if this business went to shit, I wouldn't even care because what I have now with them is so precious and I'm so thankful. And so not only has cannabis given me my health, 
but it's given me a business that has given me a life. And I, I truly mean cannabis has changed every aspect of my life and my business is definitely one of those as well. So that brings me to what, what would your life look like if you didn't have cannabis? And so I really believe I still would have went to school to be a dietitian, but I believe I'd be working like that traditional nine to five in a hospital doing something I hated for pay that now seems like, I mean, I'm, I, I, I make more money now doing something I love with 100% control and freedom than I could have ever, ever made staying in the hospital. And for me, I'm super proud of that. But back to the question, if I didn't have cannabis, I'd probably be really unhappy working a nine to five, sending my kids to daycare, coming home, seeing them for an hour a night, putting them to sleep and waking up and doing it all again the next day. And the life I live now is so free and rich and beautiful. Oh, thank God for cannabis, truly. Next question, if you could sit down with yourself 10, 20, 30 years ago, what would you say? And I would just tell myself that trust the process. I do believe everything happens for a reason. I don't believe I would be here if I hadn't had to go through everything that I've went through. And I think you'll see that with all of my interviewees as well is that, you know, on the other side of hardship is something really beautiful. And so I would just tell myself to stay the course. And my number one is to trust your intuition. Every major decision in my life I have made on my very first gut instinct reaction, it is always right. And I do not second guess myself. And then last but not least, if you could be remembered for one thing in the cannabis space, what would it be? And my number one thing is I want to be the woman who turns around and holds out her hand and says, let me help you too. And I do feel like I do that now because when I worked as a registered dietitian in the hospital, I never felt like I made a difference. I never felt like I had changed someone's life. And now I get messages every single day that I have changed someone's life for the better in so many impactful ways. I mean, people have sent me the nicest messages. It's unbelievable telling me how my work in some way or another has improved the quality of their lives. And that's what I want to be remembered for is turning around and helping others and holding up my hand and saying, I've been through this and I can help you through this as well. And so that's what I hope you get from this Well With Cannabis podcast. We are all out here just extending our hands to the cannabis community and offering our help, our support, our wisdom, our love, and our guidance, and letting people know that they are not alone in their cannabis journey. And while the journey is so unique and individual to each one of us, we all share some really common themes and that we can all learn from each other and all support each other. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you turn it, tune in to hear all of the amazing interviews I have lined up for you. Like you said, normal, regular, everyday people, just like me and you, whose lives have been dramatically improved thanks to our beautiful cannabis plant. Oh my God, cannabis, I couldn't live without you. Truly, I mean that. I thank you for listening. Thank you for being here with me today. I'll talk to you soon. Congratulations. You finished another episode of the Well With Cannabis podcast and are one step closer to discovering how you too can live well with cannabis. Thank you for listening in today. We hope this episode has been a helpful and informative one. Please visit emilykylenutrition.com for more information on today's show, show notes, guest information, recipes, and other resources. If you want more support and encouragement on your cannabis journey, please consider joining the private Well With Cannabis community. In this group, you can connect with like-minded individuals focused on improving their health and wellness through cannabis. Join the group today to continue your journey of wellness together at emilykylenutrition.com.